All right, now that you've completed the tutorials and you have a better understanding of how to use some basic functions in Tinkercad, we're gonna go and start our first project. So we're gonna go to the Tinkercad dashboard and we're gonna go to Tinker 3D Design, start tinkering. And in here, I'm just gonna go to project one. Um, you know, you can go to designs and create. So you can actually see there's a whole bunch from before. So I'm just gonna go to create right here. 3D design. And this just essentially gives you a blank work plane or workspace. We are going to go to design starters. And we're going to click on letters and numbers. Now it's important not to use these stencil numbers as when we go to 3D print them, they won't be connected. So I'm going to hit delete. More shapes. And we're going to go down. So I'm just going to do A, B, C, and everybody's text or name is going to be a varying length. These are a really nice shape to 3D print at the size they are at. So do not scale them up or down. The only thing we're going to do is align them all first by selecting, by dragging a box around them. Align bottom. So now they're all level at the bottom here. The next thing we're going to do is move them over to line up. So you can see this can be frustrating which is why I teach people to use the arrow keys to do nudging. And we don't want them just barely touching. A good overlap, so it's not weak when it's 3D printed. So that would be weak, that would be great. Again, not even touching. That would probably be fine right there. If you wanted to play it safe, you could do that. The next thing I teach people to do, and I do want this on every project, is to alternate the height. So I'm gonna go six, leave this one at four, six and if you want to go like th um, three four five six you can vary those all over the place i'm just showing you the basics another thing you would have learned is rotating so we could also rotate our objects a bit and you can see the inside one moves in 22 and a half degree increments the outside ring if we move the cursor there is more specific the only thing to be careful of when you're rotating is to make sure after you've rotated it they're still correctly touching so yeah, we can play with that a little bit and that would still be fine. Other things to check is the work plane that these are flat. Sometimes people oops, will accidentally do something like this and you'll actually see a gap here. So there'll be nothing underneath to support your print when you 3D print it. So I'm just gonna hit control Z to undo that. Otherwise you can just hit the undo redo option up here if you make a mistake. Last part, and this is the part that probably confuses people the most or gives the most trouble, is we just need to make the ring and attach it somewhere for your keychain. So we are gonna go back to basic shapes and we're gonna bring out just this regular cylinder. Now it comes out at a default size. We're gonna hold the shift key and shrink it down this way from the corner. Or I'm going to go six by six. And for height, we're going to set it to four. Now you can either bring out a hollow cylinder or bring out a cylinder and convert it to whole. Either way, you accomplish the same thing. And this one's going to be four by four by six tall. And this is millimeters. Selection box to grab both, align, middle, middle. We're going to hit group right away, and that'll create the opening for your keychain ring. This is a perfect size, nice and strong. And again, you don't want it just barely attached. And people have asked me, like, you know, can I put it down here? People have asked to put it in the middle. It tends to break off because it's not going to sit very well with your keys whereas something like here or the other end would be great. The next thing we need to do is make sure everything is grouped into one shape. You'll notice when I clicked, it didn't change colors. I like to go, instead of multicolor, just picking one color. That way I know when it's grouped, it's all one object. The color you see on here does not reflect or represent what comes out of the 3D printer. Whatever filament, so that's the big spool on the top, whatever color is there is the color that will be printed. 
this is the next part that trips everybody up or gives them problems is we need to make this a file that is compatible with our slicer software on the 3D printer. So for us today, that's Cura. We go to the export option and we do STL. Now you'll just see this almost never happens. It gives you the option. If you do get that option, great. Go select graphics 23. Sorry, your graphics might be 12, 13, 14. Find your folder, give it a name, hit save. So that saved it directly to that drive. But what usually happens is it just goes to this downloads folder. So the easiest thing to do is we go to File Explorer, find Downloads on your computer. So you can see one of my old ones here, so Ingenious Snicket. And just drag and drop it to your USB and put it into your folder, so like Spicy French Fries. Now when you remove the USB from your computer, you'll be able to access it on the other computer when you plug in your USB. Okay, so really important, export STL. If you don't get this option, which 99% of the time you won't, it just goes to the downloads folder on your physical computer, File Explorer, Downloads, drag and drop it to your removable USB drive. Okay, that's it.